once visited a patient in a hospital in Bangkok. He was the husband of one of John Fung's students. His wife meditated, but he didn't. And now he was dying of cancer. And there wasn't much in the room. There was a, a bed, a bedstead. It was a good hospital. And there was a TV blaring in the corner. And watching TV had been one of his very typical ways of dealing with boredom or depression. And at that point, though, it wasn't doing him any good at all. It was actually more of a nuisance than anything. And seeing someone in a situation like that makes you stop and think. What if you're stuck in that situation someday? What are you going to do? The various ways you've dealt with pain or boredom or the difficult issues in life, how many of them are you going to be able to take into that hospital room with you? And what about the medicine for dealing with pain? What happens when the medicine doesn't work? Or you used it so much that it stops working for you? What if the government suddenly gets really insane and you find yourself thrown in a prison and they decide they want to torture you to get information out of you? How are you going to keep your sanity? It's when you think about things like this that you realize how important meditation is. It's based on a skill that doesn't use very many raw materials. It's based on something you take with you wherever you go, your breath. whatever skills you can develop based on the breath are going to be at hand all the time. That's why it's so worthwhile to spend a lot of time with the breath and to not go hedging your bets. We often think of the Dharma as something you read or listen to, but it's actually a skill. On the one hand, dharmas are qualities of the mind. And secondly, there's the dharma of practice, which is a set of skills that you develop. So you want to take the dharma with you if you ever find yourself in prison or in the hospital or wherever you may end up or wherever you may pass through. You want to take it as qualities of the mind as a set of skills. So it's good to think about this when you find yourself tempted to go thinking about other things, wandering off away from the breath, that you've got some skills that you want to master. And there's only one way of mastering is basing them on the breath. So you can think about this in two ways. One is in the way that I've just mentioned, basically realizing that someday you're going to be cornered. And you're not going to have many things with you. But if you do have the skills you've developed with the breath, they're going to be worthwhile. That gives you a sense of the importance, the urgency in working with the breath. Another way of approaching this issue is from the point of view of realizing that everything you really need for happiness, for peace of mind, for liberation, is all centered right here at the breath as well. All the formations that you have to learn how to understand or the fabrications are right here at the breath. When you're focused on the breath, you're thinking about the breath, evaluating the breath. The thinking and evaluation are called verbal fabrication. The breath itself is bodily fabrication. The perceptions and feelings that you develop working with the breath, that's mental fabrication. 
Everything you need to understand is right here. So think about this in a way that gives you a sense of contentment. Content being with the breath. That everything you need to understand about the Dharma is something you're going to be able to see from the point of view of staying with the breath. So you don't have to go wandering outside. You don't have to second guess the different thoughts that may come floating to your mind, wondering if maybe this is something valuable or that's going to be a great insight or whatever. Just content yourself with staying right here. so you don't have a hankering to go off someplace else. So these are two ways of thinking to keep you focused on the breath. Compare one to the carrot, the other to the stick. Developing the sense of comfort, the sense of really liking to be with the breath, getting to be on familiar terms with it, being a friend with the breath. That's the carrot. The sense of urgency is the stick. And although most of the time we prefer carrots to sticks, it's good. It's important to have that stick there. I say the people who really master skills have to have a very strong sense of the value of the skill, and it comes from both of these dimensions: realizing the good that comes when you've mastered the skill, and the dangers that face you if you don't. And so as a good meditator, you have to learn to apply both, and when to apply both. When your mind is feeling really anxious, try to work on that sense of contentment. When you're getting lazy, try to develop the sense of urgency. You can learn from both. When you're content to be with the breath, it means you can look right at the breath and see what its potentials are, because you're not wandering off other places it gives you a chance to wander around in the breath. To explore all of its ins and outs. And to develop a sense of really being at home here. The more you can stay at home with the breath, sense of ease, sense of comfort, feeling secure with the breath. The easier it is to stay with the breath for long periods of time. And the longer you stay with it, the more you see. But if you find yourself just lolling around the house, watching the TV, raiding the refrigerator, it's good to peek outside and realize there are storms outside. All kinds of dangers face the mind. Remember, you're born with a body. That body is open to all kinds of things happening to it. And what are you going to do if you suddenly find your body in a really bad situation? You've got this mind, and again, Lots of things could happen to you. As long as there's attachment, the mind is leaving itself open to all kinds of suffering. So the skills you develop with the breath to cut through that attachment are very important. Because we have this house not just to relax, but it's a place where we can work in comfort. This house of the breath is home for the mind. to try to be able to read your mind when it needs the encouragement that comes from reflecting on dangers. Okay, apply that encouragement. Develop that sense of urgency. When it's feeling frazzled, discouraged, okay, work on that sense of contentment that you're on a good path, you're in a good home. And that way you find you can learn both from the contentment and from the urgency. both spur you on to 
develop the skills that you really need.